Okay, so viewer uh, Lori Lewicki has another question. She wants to know, will there be significant backlash uh, against the uh, Jubilee? So that's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. And if you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, why haven't you subscribed? Uh, remember to like the video, subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So exactly right. I mean, this is the time when people should want to uh, celebrate uh, the uh, monarchy, the um, cooperative, collaborative uh, work of a monarch and a government, and it's all in the hands of the government as to whether they're going to have the monarch or not. So yeah, this is the perfect time for the uh, for the Brits to come forward and say, well, look, this is how it should be done with some moral um, uh, uh, authority. So yeah, and I had some notes here. So uh, yeah, and also stress, you know, your beloved head of head of state. I mean, if you don't have respect for the person who is your monarch, guess what? You get rid of them, and it's easy to do. It's not that well. It's not that easy to do, but it's not that hard to do. It's not a war. And uh, then I had another thing. So it's a it's a perfect time for each Commonwealth to celebrate their oneness, their unitedness. Okay, their uh, their however their democracy or their republic public works. Okay, so viewer Lori Lewicki asks, uh, will there be significant backlash against um, public uh, against the Jubilee? I find that hard to believe. And um, I'm going to say across all the realms, not just uh, in in uh, in England. So it seems like this is an opportunity to to celebrate togetherness and nation building. And uh, so I don't know. I think that Britain's lucky to have the monarchy that they have. That there's so many uh, corrupt uh, kingdoms in the world, and um, even uh, whether you agree with Charles uh, or William, uh, they don't seem to have corrupt intent, and they can't because then they'll be. Uh, I think Parliament has the ability to stop that. <laughs> so I'm not sure, but I would think they do. But before we do anything, we have just a moment of meditation. it takes so this will be dietic cross will there be a significant backlash against the Jubilee it seems like I've already addressed this but uh, we'll talk about it and this will be just six cards okay so one two three four, five, and six. Will there be significant backlash against the monarchy because of this jubilee or regarding the jubilee? Let's see. Signifier card. Okay, this is the Knight of Cups. And uh, like you'll always hear me tell you, the Knight is the member of the Royal Court who's going to fight for the remit they've been giving. In this case, the remit is cups. And what is that? That's passion, compassion. It's heartfelt. Okay. Um, this, and then I always look in the card to see if there's something here to inspire uh, the reading. And uh, this knight here doesn't look particularly ferocious, does he? That's the signifier card of the reading, the knight of cups, the fighter uh, of, for emotion. The challenge to that, okay, is uh, the hierophant. Ah, that's the government. Uh, you know, the Hierophant uh, represents um, the rules by which a thing is handled, okay, the structure. It could be the uh, structure in your home. It could be the structure of government. It could be the monarchy. But the challenge to this uh, Knight of Cups, this Knight of Compassion, is the government. And the question being, will there be significant public backlash against the uh, Jubilee? And so this, this uh, which would be a lot of emotion, and so that's represented by this Knight of Cups, the emotion of the Jubilee, not necessarily the backlash, and it's challenged by the government. The government keeps the monarchy in check. 
the uh, basis of this reading then is the universe. This is the world card. So this is the completion of a cycle. And, you know, I don't know, it just makes me think, is this, uh, are we nearing the end of the monarchy? I don't think so, but that's an interesting way to think about it. So the base of this whole reading is the completion of a cycle. Maybe this is talking about, you know, this cycle of this, uh, of this monarch is coming to complete, and now we're getting ready to start something else. Interesting. The uh, past of this reading, then, is the Knight of Swords. So, the truth, justice, rules, law. That's what this knight uh, fights for. And uh, so that's the past of this reading. Uh, it's interesting that we have a fighter in the past regarding truth, justice, rules, and law. And the question being, will there be backlash against the Jubilee? And the sky of this reading is the Fool. Well, just like I said, this is a new start. So, I don't believe there will be. Um, especially when we start out with Empathy uh, as the signifier card. Uh, so, the Fool is a new journey. It's starting out on something fresh, expecting that the world will catch you and carry you on. And this fellow looks completely, uh, you know, confident in his, uh, in his beginning of this journey. And then the likely outcome here for whether there will be uh, a public backlash against the Jubilee is... Page of Cups. Well, the page is the weakest of the court cards. Uh, the page brings a message to the court. This time it's a compassionate message with a surprise. Look at this little fish getting ready to jump out of this cup. It's typically what you'll see in this card. So, you know, there could be a little bit, uh, a tiny, this is a little cup of compassion. <coughs> so there could be some some disturbance, but I'm going to say, um, and the surprise could be uh, completely uh, satisfying. You know, I think probably we need another four cards to get to the meat of this question. Will there be public um, backlash uh, against the Jubilee? Why would there be? So, let's see. Four cards. The self of that very question, will there be public backlash against the Jubilee? The star card. No, there won't. There's always hope. There's um, the shining example that uh, the Jubilee represents. The uh, environment that that's in then is the Ten of Swords. Okay, this is um, the end. The absolute end of, of something. Okay, something has come to a stop. Huh. So there's hope, but there's a, an end. The hopes and the fears for that is this Queen of Wands. Well, there we go. Elizabeth has stepped up again. So the Queen of Wands is plans actions. This queen is very confident in her act, and she's got a big plan, and uh, so I think all of this has been very well thought out in advance, and uh, the likely outcome of this is whether there will be public backlash against the Jubilee is the Seven of Wands, and it just tells us that, listen, there are issues to be dealt with. Wands are actions, plans, motions forward, and this is telling us there's plans, but we've got a plan in hand to, to uh, beat those back or to deal with them. So... For me, for my money, no. We start out with the signifier card, the Knight of Cups. This is the fighter uh, for emotion. He's challenged by the government, which keeps him in check. It's underpinned by the end of a cycle, which is what we're coming to with this current uh, monarch. Uh, the past of this reading with this Knight of Swords is fighting for truth, justice, rules, and law. And then the Fool up here is starting this new cycle again after this old one has finished. And the likely outcome is that uh, for this first part of this uh, reading is that there's a page of cups, a page of compassion. He moved from a knight to a page with a surprise. And the very self of that question, whether there'll be a backlash against the Jubilee, is that no, there's hope, there's a star, there's a shining example of what uh, we can be as people. And it's in the environment of something coming to an end. And of course, that's the current monarch's reign. And the hopes of the fears, we have the Queen of Wands, which is the Queen herself, having been a very big part of making sure that this legacy continues. And the likely outcome is that it will always be somewhat of a challenge, but there's a plan in hand to deal with it all. And there always will be. So, okay, that's what we got. I think those were fair cards, and, um, well, just tell me what you think. Uh, what else can we do? I, I, again, I don't try to manipulate the cards. I just tell you uh, how they read to me, and if you've been watching my readings, you see that uh, pretty much they're the same uh, meanings uh, across the board. So tell me what you think. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box, nice magnetic clasp, good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual card, shadow cards and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78 and I'll, um, I'll show you, you know, how you can use them and I'll explain why, why that is even. So I'm going to start with the booklet and um, 
it's a nice, uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all the pictures of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so a... Um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend um, in the guidebook. Uh, the, her, her, she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer, um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time, and an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out, but it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon, and I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So, they're, not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of card, but they've got a nice glossy finish, and they've got a beautiful gold uh, guild on the edges, and uh, the pictures are nice, and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing, and uh, lots of rich color, and it tells you under each of the cards how to use them, and then if you're going to use them, as she suggests, for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here, and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting, but I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I picked here, and it's in the stick somewhere. <laughs> but uh, So this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then... For justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so, number and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards. Period for the the deck. I've got two of the choices here: justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards actually. So and what happens is in some tarot decks historically, justice has been numbered as number eight, but in some tarot decks it's been numbered as number eleven. So it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the the one full suit of of the major arcana as justice is number eight and strength is number eleven, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do. You can have them labeled as strength number eight and justice number eleven. So that and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely. Uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation, but it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at, and then if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings. I would think it's a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.